Bill Walker joined us on Wednesday night. He spoke of those years where he wondered if he would find a milestone like 250 games. He did, and he celebrated it in remarkable fashion. Ten goals for Tex. The idea materialised pretty early as a possibility, and then the Crows saw it through to make sure that it would happen. It was quite the night at Adelaide Oval. Simon Goodwin shared his playing days with Taylor Walker. Simon, uh, just a bit of a salute to Tex as he goes through that milestone with 10 goals. Oh, it was brilliant, wasn't it? It was just so great to see for Tex. You know, I think uh, certainly in his early days, he was a little bit rough around the edges, Tex, but one thing you, you couldn't deny about him was he had skill. And, um, you know, he put that all on display on the weekend, like his ability to kick left and right foot and obviously hit the ball inside 50, but kick goals, you know. The, the weekend was just fantastic to see the joy that he's brought the town of Adelaide and um, you know, he put a smile on my face sitting on the couch, there's no doubt about that. The dangerous tackle conversation, so I feel like we're in good hands here. Justin, you just had uh, Jager O'Meara suspended and Simon, you've lost Tom Sparrow prior. Um, Justin, just as an overall, where do you think we are with the crackdown, which at the moment stands at 21 suspensions? Uh, yeah, oh, to be honest, Jared, I think there's a little bit of confusion. Like, um, yeah, we had um, young Matty Johnson get done against Brisbane um, for a tackle on Zorko, and I thought that was probably the textbook one where a player has two actions and slings a player. Um, but yeah, I think we're getting in dangerous territory just with the fact that um, you know some guys got arms pinned, um, some haven't, some head hits the ground, some get up, take a free kick straight away. Uh, yeah, I, I know the AFL sent out some clips um, last week and, and some of them make absolute sense, but some of them, um, if a player hits the ground, uh, head hits the ground in some of those clips, they're, they're done as well, in, in, in my opinion. So um, there is a little bit of confusion around. Um, yeah, maybe maybe the, the next bit of the coaching is don't actually take the player to ground and try and hold them up. So, Justin, what did you do with those clips? Did you show them to the players? No, we didn't, we didn't show them to the players in the lead up to the game. Um, we've been talking to our players about, um, you know, one action. Um, and then after the Jager one, it sort of, you know, you, you, can't, pin an, you can't pin the landing arm now. Or you could probably pin the, the, the arm that's not landing, but you, you can't pin the, the landing arm. So, uh, like I said, it, it, we're asking our players to make split-second decisions when... They're trying to use all their power to stop the opposition from disposing of the ball. So, yeah, we'll continue to work on it and, um, yeah, continue to seek, seek uh, clarification from the AFL and continue to watch what people are getting done for, I suppose. Simon, what, what, are your, what did you do with the clips that came out? Yeah, we didn't show our players, but we're continuing to educate them when we do our tackling stuff at training around what we want to do in that space in terms of how we tackle best for the safety of the player, but also to make sure they can't get their hands free to, to give the ball off as well. We're, we're spending a lot of time of how we do that. We educate our players on it, and clearly there's a little bit of confusion in the game about where it sits, but at the same time, as we work our way through this confusion, we're going to continue to build clarity, and I think that's all we want in our industry is to continue to build that clarity so we know where we're going, and I think we all know why why we're going there and it's really important to the game um, and we will come out better the other side of this but in the meantime we're going to have some unlucky players um, as we work our way through this scenario where we want to protect the head and um, you know I'm all for that um, there's no doubt we need to do it it's just how we do it and how we get there and you know as coaches we'll learn more and more and we'll coach and teach our players how to tackle more safely as we move forward. I'm not too sure if you saw the, the James Sisley one on the weekend either of you if you did and you're Initial reactions on that, just seeing that tackle and seeing that and then seeing it sent to, to the tribunal and then trying to, to coach your players on the back of something like that. Simon, you go first. Yeah, look, it looks really tough. You know, when you're diving at a player and you're actually not even looking at... You're actually underneath him. Yeah, so it's really hard to, to really coach that one. You're not sure what he's going into, whether it be an opposition player, the ground. Um, but as I said, you're asking split-second decision about whether to release an arm in that moment or, or how you go about that. But he was underneath the guy, and that's going to be the hardest one. You know, we're teaching our players to roll as best they can to try to protect the player. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, as we, we've seen, um, you know, there are are going to be certain incidents that are certainly you don't want to see in the game but are going to happen still in the game. Justin? Yeah, I, I agree with Simon. Uh, we're, we're also 
um, telling our players they need to be really desperate to put pressure on the opposition. Um, and, you know, Sicily was really desperate in that moment, game on the line. Um, yeah, and you've obviously got the, the second um, Hawthorne player in there, which contributes to some of the some of the collision as well. So it is a really tricky one, and it'll be interesting to see how the tribunal play it out. What, what do you think the end point is, Simon? So the principle, yes, but where, do, is the end point a substantial change in technique or is the end point not taking players to ground? It's, it's a great question. I, I'm not sure. I think in the end what we are going to do is work on our technique to make sure it happens less. Now, um, I think we're, what we're going to end up in the game is we're still going to have a number of suspensions in this space, but I'm a little bit like Geordie as well. We, we've got, obviously, the intent of the tackler and being really careful about teaching them, but I think, think we also need to make sure we're really clear on the ball carrier about their responsibility and also their protection of their head when, when they're going towards the ground. And um, I, I hope we don't start to see guys playing for a lot of free kicks in this space because we're spending so much time in trying to protect the head and also getting the tackle of the technique right. So um, it's an area that we need to be really on board with as a whole industry. Do you wonder, Justin, whether that is creeping in? Oh, I've got no doubt it's creeping in, Jared. I agree with what Simon said and agree with what Jordy said um, previous to us coming on. I think players are um, becoming really wise to the fact that they can win free kicks. Um, and if you win, yeah, win free kick close to goal, it can contribute to a shot on goal and your team winning. So, yeah, I think players are well aware of it and they'll try and manipulate whatever they can. Which makes the whole scenario all the more difficult still. And that's to say nothing of the fan watching at home and, uh, and whether they're keeping up with all of it as well. So thanks for your input tonight. We really appreciate it. We'll see how the tribunal goes. Justin, good luck in Sydney next week. Thanks, guys. And Simon, enjoy a couple of days of R&R. &R. Yeah, will do. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Geordie.